Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. So we are going to do a recap and a review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 15, episode one, titled, Who's Going to Check My New Boo? So yes, we are back with a new season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And let's just say this is Sheree's season. Because starting with episode one, even before the episode came on, we were hearing what was going on behind the scenes. So let's do the official walkthrough of this episode. So we start off with um, Sheree and Martel. And if you guys don't know who Martel is, he is um, on a show called The Real, sorry, called Love and Marriage Huntsville which is produced by Carlos King and it is broadcast on the own network. And we are in season six of that show. And I've been watching it since season one. So I've seen everything there is to see about Martel over on the own network. And somehow he has made the crossover to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So Sheree tells us that Martel, how Martel is actually um is the ex-wife of one of the other castmates over at Love and Marriage Huntsville. They were married. They were originally married um when the show started, but since um the years have gone by, they are now divorced. He shares four children with his ex-wife and another child with what they call the side chick of um the side chick that he had while he was married to his ex-wife melody and that is one of the main reasons why they are no longer married because he got his wife and his side chick pregnant at the same time so yeah if you want to know that's a quick nutshell that's that's it in a nutshell and um he and his wife were in business together and when they divorced a lot of the bills this is were nullified and I think right now Martel is trying to get himself back up on his feet. He is a general contractor or he was. He was working on his wife's um, license, builder's license, and since they divorced, they're no longer business partners. So he uh, is on the quest to get his own builder's license so he could continue working as a general contractor with some of his friends who are actual general contractors. Okay, I think I've said enough about him. So, yes, he is over here on Real Housewives of Atlanta, and he and Sheree are dating. Sheree tells us that she met him through a mutual friend, and since the day that she's met him, they've seen each other every weekend, and he has been nothing but respectful to her and kind. So, therefore, she is enjoying having him as her paramour, as they would say. <laughs> Yeah, so Sheree is dating Martel, and Martel is over here. So he is visiting Sherelle at home. I believe they have a workout session going or about to begin. He is coming from a magazine shoot where he was on the cover of Upscale magazine. So right after that, he came over to Sheree's house, and they're supposed to be working out. So um, they came over, and they're chatting a little bit, and then Sheree tells him, I have a surprise for you, so go ahead and go change it so turned out that the surprise was a personal chef coming over to cook for them. But Martel, of course, thought it was something else because he said while he was changing, he peeped and he saw that it was another female in the house. So he thought it was something else. If you're an adult, you know exactly what he was thinking. So he was not happy to have to come help cook. <laughs> he thought he was going to get something else. So the chef made their dinner and they sat down and, eat. They were and ate, I should say. And um, they just flirted a little bit. Something, it was mentioned something about OnlyFans, starting an OnlyFans account as a couple and stuff like that. And Martha was like, no girl, I'll subscribe to yours, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that. And then she reminded him that they have a birthday party to go to. So Sonia is throwing a 40th birthday party for her husband, Ross. And um, Sheree was invited and Martha is her plus one. Sheree reminds her that, yeah, we're going to see Candy there. We're going to see um, Kenya. And Marta was like, wait a minute, wasn't it Candy who would call me an opportunist? And if anybody's an opportunist, it's her husband. Marta, please, K 
Candy and Todd have been married for 10 years at least. Ain't no opportunity <laughs> this going on right there. And um, yeah, she mentioned that Kenya will also be at the party. And Martel was like, yeah, I'll be happy to see her. She's um, she's a she's a cool people and stuff like that. So they did a little chit chat and we left them here. Now we head over to Candy and we see Candy with Don Juan and Carmen, as um Miss Joyce called her, her name Carmen, Candy's friend Carmen. They're just catching up, you know, they're friends, they've been friends for a long time. And also I know Ta- um Don one still works with Candy, but I'm not sure if Carmen still works with her. But um, they were catching up, and then we see um, we see Kenya comes over, and then we see Monietta come. So so Don one and Carmen left the ladies to chit chat, and they were talking about um, of course they gossip as women we gossip. They are checking on each other. They were talking about Sheree and Martel. And then um, Kenya was like, that's enough. You know, let, let's not talk about it. No more. She, talked, she was talking about how Martel slid in her DM and she didn't respond. But then she picked out the phone and Candy tapped the screen to accept the message. But by then he had deleted it. So, uh, <laughs> so um, they were talking about how Candy does her um, spoof on her Instagram. I don't know if you follow her where she dressed up as her other castmates and and um, she does clips from the show, but she is, you know, acting as the other person. I know she did Marlo. I know she actually did Sheree with the last reunion. And um, I think she, she not only do her show, I think she also did some Married to Medicine with Dr. Heavenly and with Quad and stuff like that. Like, she, she does it so well. So if you guys have not checked out Candy's Instagram page, I'm going to link it down below. So you guys could go over there and go take a look. So they were talking about certain things. And then Kenya was like, no, Candy, let's let's talk about you. Because the last time I was on FaceTime with you, I saw that you were in the background arguing with Todd. So what was that about? You were fussing with Todd. So we all know that when Candy gets upset, she um it gets so emotional for her that she cries and her voice trembles and stuff like that. So she's in a nutshell telling the ladies that you know she feel already she's feeling mom guilt because her son ace is telling her she works too much and he wants to spend more time with her but then you know her husband is saying that he's always there for her when it's time for her to work on her projects however you know he's doing um he's writing movies you have a, a bunch of movies that he's written and he wants to work with candy and getting them produced and she can never find time in her schedule so she's talking about one particular instance where um, you know, they said, uh, she's like, okay, for instance, I have 11 a.m. tomorrow open. Let's work on your, um, on your script, on your play, on your screenplay. And he's like, no, I have a meeting at 11 o'clock. Then she don't see him having a meeting, but then she's like, what's going on at the meeting for 11 o'clock? She's like, well, they move it to four and, um, I have to meet with them at four o'clock. So she's kind of frustrated that, um, He's making it seem like she's the problem. That's what she said. But um, she's trying her best to make everything fit because she has a lot going on. Because remember, Candy has a Broadway play out. She's still writing music for people. She has this show. She has her boutique. She has, um, I believe there's another show that she acts on, like The Shy or something like that. So she has to fit all of that in. And um, she's trying to make sure that it balances out because as she says, she's building generational web for her um, family and she doesn't know how to tone it back just yet because so many things are going for her. Like she said, I turned a shade tree into a money tree. So anytime anybody has something to say about or to her, she spins it around and just make sure um, she's working. Like she's constantly working and she said it's kind of hard to balance the family life and the work life so after you know she let it all out the ladies kind of consoled her a little bit and and kenya's like girl we know you got a lot going on but you have to make time for your husband you don't want to go through a divorce like i did so make sure you make time for your husband so we left them there now we come over to sanya and her family and everybody is home sanya told us she has a packed house and then she lists the amount of people that's in her house, which is totally nine people. 
And I'm like, at this point, Sanya, no, that's too many folks in your house. She has her parents, her immediate family, of course, her sister, her sister's husband. And I believe it's three children that they have. And to this point, it's not, um, her sister is her stylist or her hairdresser. And so her sister's husband is also a realtor, but he's having a hard time breaking into the real estate market in Atlanta. So for the meantime, she's having him work as her assistant, which is giving him something to do. And it so happens that I don't know why her sister brought this in front of the camera. I mean, you could have discussed this at another point, but I don't know what you brought in front of the camera. She's like, her sister is telling her that she doesn't have boundaries. She doesn't know when boundaries, because according to her sister, when she was running track and field, you know, everybody, every, she was the center of everything. Like everybody's life revolved around her because they were prepping her. She was, you know, for the Olympics and stuff like that. But now, yeah, um, where you're not the center of attention so much. That's my words, not theirs. And she's telling Sonia that, listen, you don't know boundaries when it's time, when he's supposed to be sitting down and eating dinner, you're giving him a project to do. She's like, when it's 629 and my kids are supposed to sit down at 630 to eat, you're asking them if they want to go outside. She's like, you gotta, you know, communicate with me more and respect the boundaries a little bit better. I say the boundaries are, well, you know, I can't say that because as Caribbean people, We know that um, we usually like to have our families close and back home. We have three, four generations living in one house because that's just how it is. And I guess that's how they brought it here. But in my opinion, everybody needs to have their own space. We needed them in a house where her mom and her dad had their own little suite off to the side. And her sister and her husband needed to be in their own house somewhere. Not too far away, maybe a next block over, a couple houses down. But... In my opinion, too many people in the house and I'm sure they're working it through. She's helping them out as much as she can. They're helping her out as well because I know babysitting her kids are young. So you need babysitters and she has also a lot going on. So somehow they're helping each other out. But I didn't think her sister needed to bring that argument to her in front of the cameras. Yeah. Talk about something else. Why you got to talk about this? No, I don't like that. So we leave them there. Uh, You could tell that Sonya was upset and she didn't want that um, to have that with her sister and camera. So we leave them there. And then um, we're just jumping around and seeing what everybody's doing. We see Kenya and Brooklyn having some fun. And then we see Candy and Todd. Candy is preparing dinner for the family and Todd is on his computer. I believe he's in a Zoom meeting and Candy's like, Todd, it's family time. Please come off the um, the computer. I think he's reading through the script and with some people. And <laughs> he's like, he's trying to ignore and Candy starts singing. I can't do this by myself. I can't do this by myself. And then Todd was like, all right, guys, I got to go. It's family time. So that's how he got off the computer. Now, the cutest moment of this whole episode to me was Marlo and her nephews. They are so cute. So um, it's Taco Tuesday. They're preparing tacos for them for dinner. The kids are. And uh, Marlo comes down and she's like, ooh, what brings us on? We are having dinner on this fine china from Target. And then we hear the doorbell ring and we see that it's, um, it's Marlo's life coach. She said since the incident happened where she asked her um, nephews to leave her. Let's put it like her. She put her nephews out that she knows she was, she's not a parent. It's hard for her. So she was learning and it kind of got too much for her. So now she's working with a life coach to help her parent better. She also let us know that the kid's mom, her sister is out and she has not seen the children since she came out. So she's like, these are my kids. I don't care what she do. Michael and Williams, they're my kids going forward. So the life coach is talking to her about communication with the children, you know, expectations and that, um, and, and that they need to communicate better and gentle parenting is better where you can communicate instead of being harsh to the children because it affects everybody. So therefore try to do a little bit better. So they talked about that for a, a while. 
and then we left them there and we see Sonia go to charade they went to go work out and this is where we meet the next the newest cast member Courtney so apparently Courtney is a friend of Sheree's. At first, I thought she was a fun girl. The way she came in with the high energy and bubbly personality. I'm like, all right, all right. This is, this is going to be good. But then it turned, girl. It turned. She was talking to um, the ladies. They were having smoothies. And um, we see Sonia asks her what she does. And she says she does consulting. And she also has a jewelry brand. They're talking about the party. Uh, Sheree was like, this is Sonia. This is whose um, party you're going to go to with me. Her husband, she's throwing a party for her husband. She's like, everybody's going to be there, including so-and-so and so-and-so. And then she drops it and Candy will be there. So Courtney was like, Candy going to be there. Hmm. Of course, the girls now perk up. What's that about? She was like, Candy was out asking people about her and stuff like that and she was being messy and Sonia was like well I'm not getting into it with you girls because Candy and I are, are cool people and we're about to drop a reel on Instagram and we're gonna be good so I'm not even getting into it with you girls Sheree was like yeah she messy with me too girl she out here talking about my relationship with Martel and stuff like that and she needs to stop because we all know Candy and she was going in so I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know Sheree had a problem with candy like that. So then we finally left the ladies there and um, head over to Sonia again. She's visiting the venue for the party. She tells us that the original budget was $40,000. However, after all of what she needed to do, it is now ballooned to $100,000. Girl, really? Says she need to hire... Um, people because the theme of the party is like a harlem nights where 1940s casino night everybody had to dress up that way and use stuff from their closet don't get anything new but she said she had to order a casino tables roulette wheels the alcohol everything the sparkles it ballooned to a hundred thousand dollars and she's like well you only live once and it's for my husband so let it go then, now we are heading over. We, we're moving around a lot in this episode. We're not staying in one place too long. We have Rico and Marlo. You know, I guess Rico's making Marlo's dress for her party. So they're gossiping. <laughs> they're gossiping about everybody in the group. And um, they were talking about Candy's spoof of Marlo when she had that wig on pulled all the way down to her eyebrows. And Rico said somebody should have told her to shift that wig or whatever. But yeah, it was a fun little kiki moment to see Rico and Marlo going in. So now we have the night of the party. Everybody is dressed very nicely. They have got the theme down right. Everybody is coming in. But then it seemed like everybody was waiting for Sheree to, to come in. Like I said, it's Sheree's season. So when Sheree's walking in now with Marlo, we see... Kenya said, here's the lady of the night or the lady of the hour, something like that. Candy turned around and like, girl, she's not the lady of the hour. We were waiting for Sonia and her husband. So they're all gossiping. They greet them. And um, somehow, I don't know when the split happened. We have Marlo. No, not Marlo. We have Sheree talking to Manietta. And then we have Courtney getting in Candy's face. And Candy was like, in a nutshell, I know you guys watched the episode. In a nutshell, girl, you better back up. I don't know you like that. I only know you know one person that you know of. And you come in here bucking at me like you're about to do something. Don't let me headbutt this girl. <laughs> then we have Moneta over there talking to Sheree about Martel and his antics. Tell him, um, Sheree, that Martel is dating somebody else in um atlanta and it's not just casual so sheree's like girl i'm a ferrari and if he wants to date a toyota that's on him but i know my class and my worth we have candy jumping in the confessional talking about uh last year sheree was dating mr community service and now she's dating mr community property so last year remember she was dating a guy who just got out of prison i forget his name and now she, he, she was trying to make him her guy for the for um, last season, but he wasn't having it. He was ducking and hiding her, hiding from her as much as he could. And now she has Mr. Community um, property, which is Martel Hall. 
So yeah, there was a lot going on in that party towards the end. We had Monietta call over Kenya and told Sheree, listen, he's also been in her DM. So Sheree was like, really, let me see. So, <laughs> let me see. So Kenya was taking too long to open her purse and show her the phone. So she's like, you know what, he's here, so let's call him over. So she gestured for Martel to come over and girl, that's where the episode ended. But of course we got previews from last for the next episode. We're going to see where they go at it. I know you heard about him going at um, Kenya and him and Kenya having words and him calling her out of her name. So we're going to see that next week. But yes, we are still at Ross's party and everywhere these ladies go, they got to turn up. But on top of all of that, on Twitter last night, there were a lot of um, back and forth with the ladies. But that's in another video, so make sure that you subscribe because I'm going to bring up that video next and let you know what's been going on on Twitter. It's like everybody's coming for Sheree and Sheree is ready for them. So that is my recap and review. This is going to be an interesting season. I don't know how far down in it Martel is going to be, but it looks like Sheree is standing up for herself this season and she's not going to let anybody come at her. So that's why I say it's Sheree's season. And um, I'm not sure. It looks like Candy is kind of not worried, but kind of anxious because she's doing so much. And for everybody, I know she's exhausted and she feels that um, she's not being there enough for her husband. So hopefully they work it out by now and we could get through and pass this and she could help him with what he needs to do. Because as he says, I'm always helping you and it's your turn to help me. And um, I don't know what's going to happen because if you guys don't know, Candy was um, Broadway play that she's involved in was recently nominated for Tony. So she, it's more stuff on her plate. Wow. Anyway, I'm rambling. So like this video, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, be sure to take care of yourselves and your family. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.